Hi folks, uh, I want to show you some stuff on Desmos, which is our friend here, the Desmos calculator. And uh, I want to show you how to plot parametrics in Desmos. It's real simple. So normally we, um, uh, our position function had the function of um, r is equal to an r problem where you had four meters, cosine omega t, um, and then uh, that was the i hat term, and then four minus, or rather five meters minus four meters sine omega t uh, was the j hat term. Well, we don't do use i hats and j hats in this. What we do is what's uh, called vector parenthetical notation. And so what we're gonna do here is if we wanna do a, per, a parametric motion, I uh, start by opening my parentheses. And then the first thing I'm gonna put in is going to be my, uh, my i hat term, or my x of t, and that in this case we said was uh, negative five, um, and then it was cosine in our example, excuse me, sine in our example of. Now here's the thing: you can't put in like omega for here for a constant, so I'm just going to pick a constant here. I'm going to pick um, eight just so it looks different than um, uh, what we had before, and then t, and so then I have that parameter uh, that is not x and y. And then I'm going to put a, a comma, and that lets the program knows that the next thing is the y term. And so that we had a 4 minus 4, uh, and then we go cosine of, and then uh, 8t. Okay? Uh, and then we close parentheses, and there it is, that beautiful circle, whoa, that beautiful circle that we said uh, centered at um, 0, 4 right, and has a radius of five that we see that. Um, now, some fun things that I can do here just to, to show this, to move around the center of that circle, all I have to do is, uh, we know that this was centered there because, let's say if this was three, notice that it's centered at now three, uh, zero comma three, uh, two, if I wanna shift that over, let's say to negative four, there you go, uh, and I can shift that all over the place, um, right, if I turn this to positive, notice that didn't change anything, uh, negative, that didn't change anything, there you go. Something fun I can do here is uh, notice I can go between zero and something, zero and one, uh, zero and two, zero and three, zero and four, it doesn't seem to do anything, but watch when I go from zero to zero point two, notice it's only gone part way around the arc. I put in a constraint on the parameter. Um, Normally, we don't see the parameter when we would have the function uh, that we would put out. So there you go, okay? It only made it a certain around because if you notice here, um, if I plug in zero here, I get only one point. You can see that point there. Uh, but if I go from zero to zero point two, it shows all the points in between. So that is showing that this thing is going to go clockwise around this circle. So that's kind of fun. Um, so... Uh, let's see what I can do here just to uh, mix things up. Um, let me go to zero for a second. I'm going to change um, the, uh, the, that to positive and this to negative, or this to positive as well. And I go from zero to 0 0.2. Notice here, my starting position is different. And now I'm going uh, clockwise, or this, actually, let's see where I started. I started here, yeah, at that point, and then point two, I'm now going clockwise around the circle from a different starting position by changing uh, the signs there. Um, now, I didn't see that when I had like five in there because apparently this is showing more than a full cycle around. So how much do I have to go in order to get a full cycle around? Apparently, it's about 0.8, but it's got to be um, not exactly 0.8. I wonder, I wonder how that is. Oh, okay. Well, if you think about it, 8t, we know that sine goes through one entire cycle in 2 pi. And so when does it go through one cycle? Well, when 8t is equal to 2 pi, so if 8t is equal to 2 pi, uh, let's see, 8t is equal to 2 pi. That means at about pi over 4 is when I get to one full rotation, and pi over 4 is 0.7853, blah, blah, blah. So if I were to go 0.784, I'll, I think 78, there you go. You can see the little gap there. If I were to go 77, you'd see the more of a gap. 
right? Oh, okay, so I can figure out how long it takes to go around the circle by looking at the periodicity of those functions. Now, uh, let me put this back up here. Uh, so if I did this, um, ooh, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, change that to, I don't know, four and four, it's still a circle, right? But let's see if I do 0 0.78, I only get like, you know, part way around the circle. So that number there is affecting how long it takes to go around the circle. Now, there's a lot of fun things that I can do here. So let's just get the full figure there. The first thing I can also do is, well, what happens if this was cosine and this was sine? That's still a circle. Oh my God, that didn't affect anything. But when I drill down there and I look at uh, 0 0.5, you'll notice here that there's its initial position, but now it's going around the circle in an opposite direction. Well, why is that? Well, if we had the velocity vector, we'd be able to see that at this initial position, the velocity vector was going like this. Okay, uh, That's why we need to demonstrate it. This is just uh, not sufficient for proof, but to show you kind of how this functions. Then there's even neater things I can do. Watch what happens here when I notice here. Uh, actually, let me let me get center this at the origin just to make it simpler. There we go. I can move this back there. So watch what happens now. I have notice the uh, amplitude of these two functions is the same, and then here, remember the frequency. That's what the that number in front of t is is the same. What happens when I vary those things? So if I make this into, I don't know, 10, you'll notice now I have an ellipse, which is fun, right? Where the widest point here, it's, uh, it's uh, 20 away from the origin. I uh, remember this is called the uh, semi-major axis. Uh, the major axis would be 20 long. The minor axis would be 10 long. The semi-minor would be 5. Remember that from your, uh, your uh, trait times. So and if you notice here, one across and then uh, five there. So this is also an ellipse, right? Which is kind of fun there. Uh, so there's all sorts of neat things you can do. Let's put this back to being the same. And let's look at what happens when you change the frequency here. If one of these is, I don't know, zero, and the other one is, whoops, zero as well. Oh, I'm not getting around the circle now because I need to be at least pi. So uh, two pi rather, excuse me, let's pick seven. Uh, what happens, or actually let me just, make this 100, so I don't have to worry about that. What happens when the frequency here is 2? I get this delightful shape. Because notice what this says. This says that the x position is oscillating back and forth between 5 and negative 5, but the y position is oscillating between uh, 5 and negative 5, but it does so twice as fast. So in the time it takes the x to go through one cycle, the y has gone through two cycles or three cycles, four cycles, five cycles, six cycles, seven cycles. And so that's kind of fun. And then if I were to make this a two, that's sort of weird there. Um, if you'll notice what happens here, it's going back and forth, but the Y is sort of like just tracing over itself. Okay, and then you get all sorts of fun things like this. And then it gets really funky if I like start start uh, mixing and matching. So like maybe five and three. <laughs> and you get this. And so that's the X going back at a certain frequency and the Y going uh, at a different frequency and it's tracing out its path. And so um, this set of, <laughs> that's fun, this set of figures is known as something called the Lissajou figures. Uh, L-I-S-S-I-O-U, no, I-J-O-U figures, Lissajou figures. Um, and they're fun. And uh, that happens when we play with these coefficients here. And there's a certain set of them for which you get these closed forms versus open forms. Uh, and they form all sorts of weird oscillations. So that's just something uh, that we can play with. Then there's some even more fun things we can just do. Let's say if we have, um, you know, sine of t, um, and then maybe, I don't know, um, uh, t uh, plus uh, cosine of t. And you notice I get this traveling figure there, right? Uh, but we can play with all, oh, sorry, cosine of 4, cosine of t. Oh, God, look at that crazy looking thing uh, going back and forth, 
right? So there's all sorts of weird things that we can do. One minus cosine t, um, oh, I don't know, um, um, t uh, plus uh, sine of t, and you get a much more regular looking figure here. So let me flip flop this to make this sine uh, and this cosine. Actually, no, what I want to do is let's do t minus uh, t plus cos uh, t, and then um, one minus sine of t. And you get this rather bizarre looking figure there. I make that a two. <laughs> it gets all sorts of freaky, right? Um, but that's what the parameter is doing. And if you think about it, the x position is constantly getting bigger because of the t term. Uh, and the uh, cosine means that it oscillates kind of back and forth as it's trying to get bigger. So this is what my x is doing. But simultaneously, my y is oscillating up and down between 2 and 0. So the y is constantly doing this as the x is doing uh, the back and forth. And this is what you get as a function there. So there's all sorts of really neat things that you can do with the Desmos calculator by playing with the parametric mode. Hopefully, by the way, uh, you look at this and you know what this is and you know this is a cycloid. Um, but that's a, a story for another day. So.